Uh, my name is Ulla Haverinen Shaughnessy and I work as a senior researcher at the National uh, Institute for Health and Welfare Finland and also as the uh, project man uh, coordinator for Insulate project. And my co-moderator here is Matthias Praupa from uh, World Health Organization. Do you want to specify? Good morning, thanks for coming. I'm Matthias Rauber, working at the European Centre for Environment and Health at the Regional Office for Europe as a technical officer on housing and urban planning. So involved in a wide range of housing related health issues and healthy building is kind of my bread and butter conference. And so we have four uh, short presentations to begin with. Uh, it takes about half of the time reserved for the workshop. To begin the presentation, so the, our first uh, person presenting is um, Lynn Johnson. From uh, she's a policy officer from European Commission uh, Energy Unit. Please. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I saw that the title in the program was maybe a little bit different from what I have prepared because I think. Um, uh, we're not really doing the technical parts from the uh, Commission, so I'm uh, going to try to present the, um, the policy related to energy performance of buildings. Um, and the main tool for that is the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. And it's possible to get some more amplification from the, the microphone? microphone? Uh, the, the microphone is for the recording, and I have a very I don't have a very strong voice, so Keep it I will. But give me a sign if I should speak up, and th then I will try. Um, I thought I'd start with the broader framework for the uh, for the um, European uh, climate and energy policy. First, we have the framework towards 2020, and last year also we had a communication from the European Commission on, on the framework uh, towards 2030. So you might know the goals for reducing energy efficiency towards or reducing energy consumption towards 2020 and um, reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions and increase uh, renewable energy in Europe. And the goals for 2020 were set uh, as 2020 20, uh, and they will be increased towards uh, 2030. I will be focusing on the energy efficiency part, uh, where the goal towards 2030 will be going beyond 27%. Uh, and uh, when we did the communication last year, we found out that the most important thing to really reduce energy efficiency is to have uh, the proper enforcement in the member states. So really to put it out, put it into legislation and, and doing energy effic efficiency in practice. Um, we, we made some scenarios and as you, and, uh, here you can see that uh, if you don't, what, what happens in different scenarios, if you don't do any energy efficiency, you will keep on uh, using a lot of energy. And if you do, um, if you implement the different directives, uh, we are on the track to reaching the goals towards 2020. But moving uh, to 2030, we need to make even stronger uh, efforts with regards to, especially with regards to buildings and products. And why are buildings so important? Uh, buildings are important because they represent 40% of final energy consumption in Europe. They also represent 36% of the greenhouse gas emissions and uh, from this picture that's taken from the IEA World Energy Outlook, you can see buildings on the right hand side uh, and the potential is the light blue uh, shaded uh, area of the, um, of the graph over at the far right hand side. And this is actually 
the largest potential for energy efficiency uh, of the different sector uh, that are described. So yet to be realized and it's outside the ETS sector. And how do we do this? Our main tool is the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. Um, it has a lot of articles, but it, have, ha, it has some key articles. Uh, for instance, Article 3 is about uh, the, uh, the need for ado ado uh, adopting a calculation methodology for the energy performance of buildings. Articles 4, 5, 6 and 7 uh, requires the member states to, uh, to set minimum energy performance requirements uh, based on uh, the principle of cost optimality. And it also requires the member states to, to present uh, a report to the Commission uh, where it describes how they can uh, set these requirements uh, cost efficiently and it needs to describe the status quo and what is cost optimal and if there's a gap between the requirements for new buildings, uh, for renovation of existing buildings or for building elements, uh, they need to provide us with a plan for how to reduce this gap towards 2020. So this is kind of one of the tools the Commission use, uh, uses to, to make sure that we can uh, reach the targets towards 2020 and 2030. Articles 8, 14 and 15 are more about the technical building systems and, and you have the same requirements that uh, you, uh, you should have cost efficient um, uh, technical systems as well. Uh, for instance, uh, if you renovate your, your um, heat pumps or your air conditioning system and so on, uh, it should be done in a cost-optimal way and it should be fit for purpose. That means that you can have a very uh, cost-efficient uh, uh, air conditioning system, but maybe it's not really built for your building. It might be way too large uh, and then it could be efficient for a larger building, but it's not fit for purpose for your building. Uh, so this, and this needs to be checked uh, regularly. Uh, uh, and I think we say that eight, every eight years is the, is the um, maximum you can allow for to check your system and that's because we want these checks on the technical systems uh, to also, in the checks you also, you will have an independent expert to give you advice on how to improve your system in, in a better way and this is to incentivize um, uh, improvements of your system, maintenance and so on that can improve the systems. Article 9 is about nearly zero energy buildings, so it requires the member states to, to, to provide us with a report on nearly zero energy buildings because by the end of, or by 2019, all public buildings are supposed to be nearly zero energy buildings. By 2021, all buildings that are placed on the market will be nearly zero energy buildings. So the member states um, um, make a report to us on how they're going to achieve this, what their, uh, how they, uh, what kind of definition they have for a nearly zero energy building, and. Um, and, and they really need to put calculations or provide us with information on what is really a nearly zero energy building in that particular member state. Uh, another diff, uh, or important part of, of the directive is the system for energy performance certificates. All member states need to have a system for energy performance certificates in place. Um, it needs to describe how, how it's issued and for what buildings it should be issued. Uh, it needs to have, for instance, recommendation on what kind of things that can improve uh, an existing building. So that, that might be, for instance, uh, when, you receive, when you want to sell your house, you need to have a new uh, energy performance certificate. And the recommendation perhaps is maybe you have a house from the 40s or 20s. It might have very bad insulation, uh, which can be cost efficient to improve, but still 
many people don't know about these solutions, how to do it, how much it will cost, how much they can save and so on. And this can all be, um, we try to make the member states have this kind of information and recommendation to have better uptake and investment in, in energy, um, more energy, better energy performing buildings. Um, also, for instance, public buildings and buildings frequently visited by the public uh, public needs to have uh, this energy performance certificate a display on what kind of building it is. So I didn't really check the Eindhoven University, but maybe I will do that before I go. Um, in addition to the requirements in the energy performance directive, there are some requirements in the energy efficiency directive also related to buildings. Uh, one of them being article 4 which is about uh, renovation strategies. So what kind of national strategies do you put up to really improve the building stock in your country? Uh, another part is uh, related, it's article 8 and it's about energy audits which requires a large enterprises to, to have an uh, energy audit of, of the company, meaning that it's more than the energy performance certificate because the energy performance certificate is about the, the performance of the building as such. While an energy audit is, um, it could be also about the house, but it, if you have a business and you, yeah, and you do, um, I mean, whatever kind of business it is, you might need to check the process, how much energy is used in the process, where do you use most, where is it a possibility to, to save energy, and so on. Uh, or, you, or it might be maybe you run a big company for transportation, and then you also can include transportation. So transportation is obviously not a part of the energy performance buildings. Two minutes. Okay, and uh, then I think I will go very very quickly forward. Um, the, the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive will be re reviewed by 2017. And we do this, so the timeline is 2017. And it, uh, it will be done through a public consultation to be launched this year, foreseen already in June. Uh, and then we will have an ex post evaluation of the, um, of the implementation of the Energy uh, performance of buildings directive. So we, we will be going through the different member states legislation, what they're doing to, uh, to implement it, both uh, in the legal part or, or their legislation, but also more in practice. Uh, and the public, I think maybe then I might have to skip, skip some of the slides, but uh, there will be an online questionnaire uh, split into different sections and uh, everyone is invited to participate. Member states will participate, NGOs, stakeholders, uh, whoever is interested. And it's a rather long questionnaire, but it's possible you don't have to answer all the questions. Uh, you can answer some, uh, which I think makes sense because some people know more about one subject than the other. Um, what I didn't mention about the directive is that, I mean, it's not very focused on 